Hi guys, here's my first Ed Talk for 475. Um, I took my ideas from chapters 1 through 3 in the New Teacher's Book and summarized them into three words, all starting with the letter R, so hopefully that will make it easier to follow. My first word is response, and that incorporates the idea of us as new teachers going into the classroom, into a school, having certain idealistic expectations and ideas about our students, about our classroom, our management, our coworkers, and also just how we as teachers are going to be presenting our subject matters. And we all know that nothing is going to go perfect. We're going to make mistakes and we're going to have bad days. And Students will make comments as well as coworkers, and hopefully not too many from the principal. But just learning and thinking about how our responses can help us grow as teachers. Our responses to the remarks from the students or from other people. And just using our response, whether it's positive, hopefully positive, or negative, to help make us into a better teacher. My second idea is reflection. Um, and that mainly entails having self-reflection. All of the authors um, point to the fact that it's really important to have self-reflection, not only over how we taught or presented our lesson, but also on the curriculum we use or how we um, put together a unit, what engagement strategies we um, chose to help our students understand the subject. Um, just constantly, every day, having that self-reflection. As one of the authors says, perhaps the best we can do is to ensure that early in our teaching lives we create mechanisms of self-reflection that allow us to grow and allow us to continually rethink our cur curricula and classroom approaches. Nurturing these critical mechanisms may be vital if we are to maintain our hope in increasingly trying times. So using that self-reflection to not only help us grow, but also to help us get through those tough days um, and just keep plowing ahead and doing what we know we had set out to do. Um, my third idea um, goes with the word relating, and that's probably the um, most critical idea I got from all of the articles just knowing how important it is to truly get to know your students, know their cultural background, where they're coming from, what kind of home situations they have, whether it be a single parent or both mom and dad or maybe grandparents or no parents at all raising them, um, knowing their likes and dislikes, what excites them, what interests them, and using all the information that you can possibly get to help make your subject more relatable to them. I really like the article where the teacher used gang-related stories to help engage her students, um, just to help them actually get interested in reading and writing, and how she used those topics that generally people don't like to um, approach, such as death and violence and gangs and um, minorities, how she used that to actually unify the classroom and make um, writing and reading more personal for those students, which help them become more engaged and apply that not only in their classwork, but in their life as well. So just thinking about that and how I can use information I'll learn from my students to help them relate to the mathematical concepts that hopefully I'll be teaching. And knowing how difficult that's going to be, but just embracing that challenge and trying to use it to help those students. Not only to learn what math is, but to apply those um, patterns and ideas into their life to help them become more critical thinkers. So in conclusion, I want to leave you with this quote. Protect and nurture yourself. Have fun in your life. Teachers do a lot of work outside of school hours, yes, and you need to expect that. But daunting though it sounds, you also need to make time for yourself. Walk, play ball or chess, swim, fall in love, don't forget how to laugh or feel good about the world. Have fun so that you can work hard, and work hard so that you and your students and their parents can have fun without looking over their shoulders.